Woo! All right. I love Messi. <laughs> so back in 2021, Stellantis had a lot of promise. I mean, a lot of promise. It would be almost said that, well, I take that back. Nobody really knew who the f Stellantis was. I might be lying. But the thing is, is that being that all of that may be true, Stellantis and their initial response, they did okay. They sold about 2 million units their first year, 6 million units globally. They had a lot of promise, but as time went on, not doing so well. And they have been in the news quite a bit for either quality. Their CEO, Carlos Tavares, has definitely been under fire for the mismanagement of the company. And it seems as though that Stellantis may or may not be doing all that great. But the bigger conversation that needs to be had is not so much who messed up Stellantis, but why Stellantis is not doing well in the first place. And at the end of the day, it always boils back down to making better cars. What's up guys? My name is Chris and welcome to the breakdown where we talk about everything cars, news and reviews. If you're new to the channel, of course, welcome. And if you're not, welcome back. So you guys did the poll as I do typically every week and you guys chose Stellantis make better cars. The thing is, is that while Stellantis is a multinational conglomerate with 14 different brands going anywhere from Fiat to Chrysler to Peugeot to Opel to Vauxhall, even Maserati, they got a lot of cars. But having a lot of cars is not necessarily a good thing. And as we know, quantity does not always equal quality and that's the conversation we'll be having today. So in this video, not only will we be talking about Stellantis as a brand, what it's differences in the brands and what's been doing well and what is not and Carlos Tavares and the dealer body but more importantly why you should stop shifting blame and simply focusing on making a better product with that being said stick around and stay tuned because you are now watching the breakdown Let's see here. Read this letter. <laughs> um, yeah, it seems as though that the dealers are pissed. Um, the bill has come due for the decisions that you have made to engineer those profits in 2023. Mm. And your attempt at a soft landing on the backs of your employees, your dealers and your suppliers is frankly just wrong. Hmm. Yes, in the very short term, it will be painful for Stellantis, but mistakes at this level usually are. We do not want an apology or your resignation. Those do not put people back to work. We simply ask that you do the right thing, write the check, pay your bill, and let's move forward. Woo! Those dealers were pissed. Now, before we get started, I do want to go ahead and preface this, that this is not an indictment on Stellantis as a company. Sometimes... Companies make mistakes, the people who run them make mistakes, and that's okay, but it, what's not okay is when you try to BS the public and decide to tell them the real problem is the quality issues, when in fact there is no one to blame but the people who made the decision. So I just want to give that a little bit of one too in case anybody thinks I'm being completely subjective. I'm going to try to be as objective as possible. But the thing is, is that for Stellantis back in 2021, they had a lot of potential. And for you guys that don't know, I've already done a video about this in case you guys are wondering. Wondering. I have been covering this for quite some time and it seems as though I tend to be a little ahead of the time. It would be that Stellantis has been writing their own chapter and so this should not be a shocker to you as I analyze their situation. If you didn't know, FCA and PSA formed together back in 2021 to create Stellantis, a multi-conglomerate organization that functions across 14 different car brands and in a sense consolidating all of their resources and making logistics efficient as possible as well as creating quality produced cars. Many of you may not know Stellantis, but you may know FCA. If you don't know FCA, then you more than likely know Chrysler, which is the sub brand of many of the other brands. Stellantis has been doing relatively decently in the U.S. market. And I also want to point out that a lot of the data that I will be presenting will focus on the U.S. market, not necessarily globally. But if you want me to do that, feel free to leave that in the comments below and I'll try to do my best to go over it. Over the course of the last few years, from 2021 to 2023, Stellantis has been doing moderately okay. 
market. In the US alone, they sold roughly 1.7 million units. And one of the biggest selling parts of Stellantis is the Jeep, Dodge, and Ram brands. Chrysler only has one vehicle as of right now as they discontinued the Chrysler 300 last year. So they have been really kind of the last barrel of the bucket for all intents and purposes. But Stellantis as a brand holds more than just Chrysler as they also hold the Fiat brand, Maserati, Opel, Vauxhall, and many others, as well as Peugeot. Now, we will get into the nooks and crannies of reliability and quality, but I wanna focus the efforts on what Stellantis has been trying to do and how they have fared so far. Now, in terms of the sales, they've been doing relatively okay, and one of their best-selling products has been the Jeep Wrangler, as well as the Dodge Charger, as well as the Ram pickup trucks, which the Ram pickup trucks and the vans do absolutely well commercially. However, the United States is not really where Stellantis makes a lot of its sales. In fact, a lot of their sales account for more than 60% globally as Stellantis over the last couple of years collectively between US and globally have sold about 12 million units between 2022 and 2023. Now, the thing is, is that amongst all the brands in Stellantis lineup, Jeep and Ram have been absolutely crushing it. How soon ever, Stellantis has also been having some dogs in the lineup, being Maserati and Fiat. Initially, when Fiat came over about 10 or 12 years ago, it was the intention that this would be bringing an Italian flair as Fiat had left the US market years ago back in the 80s, I believe. And that was when we would see Fiat kind of go bye-bye. And unfortunately, many of the problems that existed back then with Fiat then exist now in terms of quality. Additionally, Maserati has not exactly done well itself as being one of the first liabilities for Stellantis over the last couple of years. And Stellantis's first loss would come from Maserati. Losing roughly about 20% of their revenues, Maserati even though it is more of a niche brand and designed and focused towards luxury, it has been plagued with reliability problems, which honestly partly could be because Italian cars in they don't really hold up that well, as opposed to things we, we have come to expect from the Americans and the Japanese and the Germans. And the Germans usually over-engineer their cars. The Japanese, they simplify their cars enough to be basic transportation with some luxury appointments. And American cars focus on value, but Italian cars alongside European cars don't really do that well. Now, it's fair to say, even though the Maserati and the Fiat side of things haven't done that well, Peugeot has absolutely crushed it, as well as Opel and Vauxhall, because they have refined themselves, especially Especially once Opel and Vauxhall got sold off to PSA and became a part of Stellantis, they have done absolutely well. But the real focal point of this is that the company itself is just really struggling to make a mainstay. Now, as quality is concerned, much of Stellantis is really not that great because even though they had initial rave reviews back in 2021 from JD Power Associates from the Ram and Dodge brands, initially they would later on from 2023 to 2024 start to fall on the charts. Stellantis as a brand has its own quality issues, but the bigger component is the more you start to create a lot of complexities, that's really when you begin to run into a lot of trouble. According to the JD Power and Associates Dependability Study in 2024, apparently Dodge and Jeep were right above average, whereas Chrysler and Ram were very below average in terms of dependability. We can attribute this partly because Chrysler only has one vehicle, as I said before, but it's not surprising that many of their brands are not doing that well in terms of reliability there have been multiple recalls regarding Stellantis products in going anywhere from anti-lock brake malfunctions to steering suspension and electrical issues and the thing is is that in comparison to many of the other companies Stellantis with its sub-brand Chrysler as a part of Chrysler because as you see there's much layers to this Chrysler as a brand even well before the Daimler Chrysler era was never really that great in quality in fact there's this joke that says that most of those cars are made on Friday because they always seem to break but I think we have to look a little bit deeper as opposed to just thinking on the surface most people tend to look at cars as an assembly of parts and they get you from A to B. But that's not the way that companies look at cars. They look at them as potential sales to increase profitability, to increase shareholder net worth. And at the core of this, the bigger thing is, is that when you are a CEO like Carlos Tavares, it's very easy to get lost in the minutia of everything that goes around you in terms of manufacturing, suppliers, dealerships, and everything else. Now, it would come up that Carlos Tavares would be one of the highest paid automotive CEOs ever. <laughs> 
I want to say last year that he was noted for. And at that point, I knew we had a problem because why are you getting paid $39 million when you've got warranties out the fucking wazoo? But that's besides the point. Whenever it comes to cars and manufacturers, dealers, it's a very complex network of supply chain if you will and the first people to complain even though they're making hand over fist would be dealers but the bigger people to complain is always going to be shareholders whether it be fiat whether it be jeep whether it be ram anybody under stellantis all have their operative cultures but at the end of the day they all have to respond to carlos Tavares, and at the end of the day he has to respond to shareholders if you guys have ever seen the dropout and you've seen the story of theranos you also get to see elizabeth holmes where she has to respond to shareholders and and why the company is not doing what's supposed to do and you see her kind of shaking her boots that's not the first time that a visualization of a ceo has ever been pushed but i want to point out even for carlos tavares who is over this multi-conglomerate network was still being paid 39 million dollars calls into question why he's being paid that much whereas the products that are being sold are not doing that well which this turns into a big open letter presented by the dealer body for stellantis and they were pissed when it came to who was responsible for the downfall of Stellantis, Carlos Tavares essentially said that the real problem was the products they were pushing out and essentially everybody was not doing and pulling their weight. And the dealers had a lot to say about that. I'm going to go ahead and put a link to the open letter in the description below and in the comments below. But needless to say, it really pointed out what I had already said at the point of this video that even though Stellantis has a lot of different components and mechanisms to it, it still has a responsibility to its its consumers to provide quality products and it's dealers because it's dealers has to provide that to consumers when your product sucks baby nobody's gonna buy those nobody's gonna buy them <laughs> and honestly while carlos tavares is making efforts and strides to try to push where the issue is the ultimate thing is is that you simply need to make better products you cannot cut your costs so much to the point where you get a multi-million dollar bonus and you have your workers on the front line struggling to make proper wages and for those of you who think that a car maker or car manufacturer on the front line working should be paid what they are these people work damn near 24 hours a day in shifts they are very unfavorable working conditions and in some cases they don't even have proper benefits and if we really want to keep it funky a lot of them are contractors so they're not actually employees to Stellantis's network and so between the workers union as well as the dealer body being completely upset with the way that Stellantis has handled the process of manufacturing and producing and allocating cars to the dealer body as well as the shareholders being pissed there comes a point where the ceo has to assume responsibility and the reality is is that while you can talk all of the things that's wrong with it at the end of the day you have to do what's best for the company in terms of making better cars for your consumers and as long as the supplier network is not fruitful it will always be a problem for quality products to be produced and in turn if they are not quality products then basically you lose customers it's that simple but with that being said you guys leave me a comment below let me know what your experience with Stellantis has been I wanted to touch a little bit on Fiat and Maserati but just not today I think that that's a whole nother conversation for another piece and also let me know if you think that Stellantis is going to make it after Carlos Tavares departs or if you think this will be a renaissance for them to be able to come back and hit both Ford and GM with the one two and with that being said until the next video I will see you guys later